this was like Hollywood movie, like the quintessential CEO gets just skewered. I can't think of the word skewered. I was gonna say sivered, but I was like, that's an inside joke. So skewered <laughs> for a decision they're making. Welcome back to the Smart Nonsense Podcast, baby. I'll explain my background, Pop, if you'd give me a second to introduce ourselves. I know it's been a while. Hey, is that the shirt? I think it is. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. We talk about (laughs) entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms, baby. Look, I got handguns. I just learned if you put them together and you push your tongue back and you blow, you can whistle. All right? That's from Smart My mom does that. That's how she calls us in public places. It's like a you're dog, a, a dog whistle for humans. Yeah, you're a dog. <laughs> it works really well. We'd be in like a a giant field with a thousand people, and she's just like, <gasps> and we fucking perk up, my brother and I, just because we've been trained like little Pavlovian dogs to to uh, salivate and run the towards. The best, you. the best. Yesterday was uh, your mom sending a news article in your group chat with your brother, and he's like, mm-hmm. "God fucking damn it!" With the group chat, stop these things, mom. Next day, send another There's one. No response. <laughs> my mom, we, we just all pepper this group chat. Here's the thing. My brother, he works in, a, he has a roofing company and he's just bombarded with messages all day. He hates them. They drive him crazy. It's tough to develop family relationships. I know you got a rip in group chat. I saw Issa, who's, uh, I, I guess you can say she's my girlfriend. That's a lot has changed in the last <clears> month. <throat> uh, she has a family group chat that rips and then, we try and do it and uh literally my brother is like quit it with these fucking group messages exclamation point and then my you're mom just so keeps different. sending them you're all different. <laughs> it's hey hey you wanna there's a cute photo i found hold on i want you uh, to I'm show your underwear. shirt to the people at home the people on youtube oh you're back in the original studio pop would you look at that mom's house you are hey. in mom's house here's the shirt I love <laughs> BJ. For the folks at Gotta home, that is Beijing, China. Beijing, yeah. Does well, a hey, multi-purpose. Here's the photo. Look how cute. Look how. Look is how that cute. slick. No, that's, that that's my brother. That's He's got Patrick. a barb, barbed wire tattoo. Had it, getting it removed. Really, really painful process. Really expensive. You don't want to do that. Why get it removed? Is it that bad? <sighs> uh. Yeah, I don't know. He's like 42 now. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you, you uh, got to Indian shed, band shed the past. Tattoos. Native American got band it. tattoos? I don't know. Uh, hey, uh, w- I, I checked, Belki. The last time we talked on a podcast was over a month ago, December 14th. What the fuck? You know what what's today happened? Is? January 18th. You know what's happened? I, December 14th, I am supposed to be somewhere right now but my dad took thener to the wrong airport yesterday so i got here alone and god knows i'm not sleeping in that van alone dying in a parking lot so i'm in a hotel i'm gonna hide it wait 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 <laughs> and it cost me a pretty uh, penny a follow-up pop. question is where is that pretty penny coming from but the first question pop, is she going out of the guardian morning she's in chicago pop I mean, not LaGuardia. And, what's the what's the other O'Hare. Penny Bunko? So Air- Southwest, Southwest. My parents, big. Hey, I'm American Airlines guy now, Pop. Hell yeah! Welcome. This is the problem with not recording for a month. Hey, okay. can we say really quick before we lose people? I know, I know, most of them stay along for the journey. <laughs> oh, but, uh, <laughs> tell them, Pop. This is the craziest fucking podcast update of our lives. Uh, we were at rock bottom. We still kind of are at rock bottom. No, I don't know where Pop. we're. At. Pop, I had a run-in with death last night, Pop. Where is this podcast going? Anywhere. It could go anywhere. If the if the view duration on this podcast isn't like average 38 minutes, we didn't do it right. All right. All right. Well, we're we're gonna tell you all about the craziness. But Belky, tell me what you getting murdered? I don't know where to start, Belky. You're We're going to go back to the month in a second, but I got to tell you why I'm here. Okay. My parents are big Southwest people, big budget airline Mm -hmm. people. Southwest always flies out of Midway. 
my dad's muscle memory mm. and maybe early on, onset Alzheimer's. He went straight to Midway. Southwest also just got a contract to start flying out of O'Hare. Her flight was from O'Hare. Uh, so mm. She didn't make it. She's flying now. That's tough. You didn't have a, a backup check. I'm American check. Airlines no was... guy now, Pop. Uh, uh, all right. Half of that plane is business class. On the on the New York to like LA, half the plane's business class. There's like 10 rows of coach in the back. I'm like, that's really? sexy. Really? Did you and upgrade? Southwest is all fucking bus seats. Um, no, Pop. But they wouldn't let me upgrade. Oh, I got a lot of tea, Pop. I'm like, uh, I'm crawling out of my skin, Pop. I'm, it's, hey, it's this is going to be a long pod, too. I like it. I got a lot of work to do, too. Um, no, I didn't upgrade. Uh, they don't. It was full, apparently. But they also don't like letting me upgrade because I buy coach. But I've been really nice to them. And then they just put me in the exit row that's at the bulkhead with all the leg room. It's like one of those yeah. long, long flights. And they don't charge. It's usually like 100 bucks. So that's good. Nice. But you can't really work on a desk there, right? Uh, in a little tray table desk? You get a tray table, Pop. It comes out of the armrest. Oh, it pops up from the side. I forgot about that. Hey, they think these things through. Hey, you know what's brilliant? I thought about it on one of my flights recently because I've been flying everywhere. I've been all over the map. <laughs> I actually, I'm, I, I realized, here's my shit. I still haven't unpacked it. I'm like, that's all of my life, by the way. Uh, I didn't have any clean clothes, so I had to get this I Love BJ shirt out of my closet. Also, a fucking... We had cleaners over, and they brought their daughter, and she's, like, not fully there, and she fucking, like, slammed into the my closet door and broke it. Uh, so, what was I going to say? Uh, flying? <laughs> flying things? Oh, what's brilliant? Look at my fucking hair. I haven't gotten a haircut in, like, two Medusa. months. Medusa. Medusa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tentacles rolling what's cool is you know when they used to like planes i'm trying to think of an analogy here <laughs> this is where we're going okay 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 it's kind of like a tesla like here's the problem remember when the shit when you'd go on like car rides as a kid and some cars if your friends were balling out had little like uh screens in the back of the driver's seat or whatever in the the shotgun seat you're like yo i want to go on road trips with them that's the shit and they'd play like movies and stuff the problem with that is in like two years that's going to be obsolete like the screen's going to look all jank and it's going to be terrible what i love is the same thing happens in airplanes where you'll go on a plane and it's like oh this plane's from like 10 years ago because it's got this like terrible looking monitor and like ah, it just doesn't fucking hit and then some brilliant dude's like Hey, everyone's got one of these little iPhones. Oh, uh, Let's yeah, just put the little, the little slot that comes out. Now all our plane rides are cheaper because you don't have to buy all these screens. And it updates automatically because you're the one buying the phones. And that's what you use as your, your monitor. It's brilliant. I saw that, Pop. I saw it on a plane. The, the little kickflip. The kickflip, uh, dude. The kickflip. And then there might have even been kind of an extending up. No, it just leans. You, you lean your tablet it, on the It's on the, the simplest thing. I'm like, this saves so much money and it's literally a better user experience because everything's through your phone now. And they're like, oh, you, you get to look at all the movies. It's, it's like, why wouldn't you do this before? But the beauty is everyone has big ass phones. So it makes sense. Hey, uh, Pop, I'm going to make some coffee. I don't have to go anywhere. It's right next to me. But I'm just going to let you know I'm going to make some coffee. Are you really bragging because you're in a Hyatt? Pop, 150 bucks. For That's night. not bad. I requested uh, late checkout so I could treat it as a WeWork too. Did you did you charge that with your Amex Platinum? No, this is personal, Pop. I, I could not create a narrative. Oh, oh Amex Platinum. Your Amex? No, Thiener's got it. Thiener's got the physical Amex Platinum. I have... You have the Pop. digital, though. But, Pop, I have the Hyatt credit card, Pop. Uh. <laughs> hey, I just got my gold today. I have today. all the credit cards. I got Apple. Look at this. I got Hyatt. Fucking I got cool. Amazon. I got... <laughs> nice. <laughs> I got hey, Sapphire Reserve. You, I've got the plat coming. I got them all. You got to catch them all. You know what's all, funny? <laughs> We're doing this little split wise. And hey, by the way, you owed me like 89 cents in split wise. So I better see that money. But No, uh, it didn't say that. <laughs> you got the wrong person, Pop. No, dude. It, it wants me to fucking uh, settle. You got to settle up with me. You better settle. I It, it says I'm settled uh, up, Pop. It's not uh, me. Austin it's owes me 84 me. cents. I'm yeah. not going to. 
But that's oh, the thing. Get, it's just really from, funny. From this entire group ski trip, you got back 84 cents in totality. <laughs> that's what it's from Austin. Or, yeah, nice. Okay. That's what, uh, that's the only person that owed me money. Or you, I don't know who sent me money. But uh, no, it's just goofy. I'm like, we're doing all this split wise for like $7 total. It's like, why am I sending seven dollars to Pop? No, Shivan like, was a couple hundred because he bought. The I know, Airbnb. but he's the only one. Everything else is like, oh, it kind of balances out. Yes, sir. It's what just goofy. I'm like, this though, is half a is sandwich. Split. It is goofy. Pop opportunity cost is goofy. Friends are goofy. Pop, but Splitwise is a good app, and people should use it. And that's why this episode is it is nice. By Splitwise until you fuck up your emails, and then I gotta go roundabout ways. Hey, no, it's funny. Uh, my mom saw my hair and she's like, wow, that's embarrassing. And she's like, good thing. I got exactly the solution for you. What is this? I'm just going to talk to nobody now. Well, uh, it's just funny because I get back home and she hands me a coupon for $3 off a haircut. And she's like, here you go. That's go your treat solution? yourself to a haircut. It's just funny because she's. I know she's been saving this haircut coupon for me for like a month. And I'm like, it's three dollars off. Pop, you need you need like ten million dollars, Pop, so that you can give like three of three of those millions to your mom. And then she'll still cut something coupons dude. because I do it too. She, and so does it's Tainer. it's a fucking junkie habit. You're just like, I'm screwing the system. The I'm winning. Because everything's win lose. Hey, uh, is this a transition? I think it is. Because we got to get Woo! into what we thought was a win win. We were going from smart nonsense to clipped for 2022. <laughs> it turned into the biggest lose lose the world's ever seen. Kind of transitioning into a win win, but I don't even know where we're at still. It's very confusing. Uh, we're close. Our last podcast. It's, it's been a terrible we, month, but we're close. The worst. The worst. But uh, thank God we're together, even if it is. Uh, often in different hemispheres but uh we've been able to to hold strong basically what we wanted to do was kiss smart nonsense goodbye that was the agency we wanted to move into clipped clipped is more so a platform it is a platform where you can come hire world-class video editors to make amazing videos why did we want that we're like hey if we wanted to scratch our own itch like what we did early on we wanted to create a place where it's super easy one click you come in you're like hey i want an editor bam we just give you one. You know they're amazing. You trust us. You've seen our content before. And then you can just start ripping. That was the idea. So the problem was moving from this agency, which is like this lovely place to work, this amazing environment. The pay loveliest. was good. Everything was, was yeah, I've it was fun. I've never seen something so lovely. But the problem was uh, we were highly dependent on whatever our business model was. Traditional agencies are, you come in, we hear your problems, and we give you the solution. We were like, oh, that's a lot of work. We got to do it custom for every person. We don't want to do that. That's not the type of company we want to build. So we're like, let's try and productize this agency. A uh, couple iterations we went through trying to refine the model. We finally settled on 10 for 10, which is 10 beautifully edited up to 60 second clips a month for $10,000. That's awesome. And we had a whole team just specialized for clips. So we had our, our animators, obviously, but we also had time cutters. So they're taking like a three minute segment, cutting it down to like 54 seconds or whatever it is to tell that awesome story. And then graphic artists, they're the ones cutting out all these different graphics that the animators are going to use to make the video beautiful. So we had this whole process. We even had captains overseeing the, the product quality and talking to the different clients. And then we're like in the back. Uh, just overseeing everything. So it was this whole fucking company. Uh, it was running smoothly. It was like a factory just ripping through content. But there were issues. Until we realized <laughs> it don't work. It doesn't work. Our pitch, our pitch for like creating viral content. No. Didn't add up. It works. Here, here's the thing. There are two sides, right? Uh, I, I learned this over when I was working at the dating company. It's basically like you have selling, which does your pitch work, does your offer work, and then does the product you're offering work. And you need both sides. If you have an amazing product, but no one knows about it and no one wants to buy it, it's never going to work. But if you, uh, if you have an amazing offer, 
but the fucking product doesn't work, that's never going to work either. So you need both to work well. And we get so excited about 10 for 10 because we knew our animating team was dope. Like the, the output's always going to be amazing. And this was finally the offer that was a no-brainer for everyone. They're like, 10 for 10, that just fucking, it clicks. It, it sounds good. It sounds like it should work. That's two videos a week, roughly, and they're awesome videos. It is 10 grand, which is expensive for 10 videos, but fuck it, let's try it. So we, got a, we basically sold out immediately. Like everyone wanted this because the offer was so good. Thanks to Belky's little brilliant mind on that podcast that you can listen back to. You want to come up with maybe a no-brainer retainer. Ooh. No-brainer retainer. No-brainer retainer that's, you know, 10 grand a month, 10 clips. Right. And that's just our religion. The problem was the actual offer didn't work. It does. It does in certain cases. Like I think there are certain people like say Naval, where it's like he doesn't want to be blasting the world with content. He only wants say 10 clips a month. But keep in mind, he's also not paying for those clips. He probably would, but he's not. And the people that are paying are like, the ROI on this just doesn't make sense. Like take a, uh, oh, you're competing gets the- with, you're compete, competing with teenagers effectively on TikTok reels, YouTube shorts for short form content that are doing 10 times better engagement wise with one tenth the, the quality because those platforms reward amateur by design and our shit is cream of the crop premium. Primo. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> it is that mm, we put way too, we put four days into this video and it doesn't and make sense because also get, yeah. part of the problem is you spend four days on it and then a lot of these podcasts take all in, for example, they're like news podcasts. So if it gets out by the end of the following week, that's already irrelevant versus if you just cut it that same day with some amateur by design, like what Henry and I could do as editors, that's just going to work a lot better. And it does. What was kind of funny was I remember we we're shitting on my first million because they were their first client or whatever, whichever way that was, they created smart nonsense and we were ripping through content, but we always had this problem where they didn't want to share. Like they didn't come in really asking for clips. We just did them and they're like, wow, this really works well. And we retweet it. And it's like, it's fucking fun. Um, they scaled it up like crazy, but then they weren't seeing the sort of growth that they wanted from it. Um, so what happens is they dropped us and then they were just like struggling with video content for the last few months. And they finally settled on this idea, which I don't know where it came from, whether it was Ben, their uh, new producer or who, but like, hey, let's just take the money that we would have spent on, say, a smart nonsense, like 10 to 20 grand a month, offer that as prizes to whoever out in the ether creates our content for TikTok or Twitter or Reels and gets the most total views. And we're just going to give them that prize money. So they did this. And I remember I sent Sam a message. I'm like, yo, because I was sending him all my uh, workout videos. I'm like, because he's trying to become a workout influencer. And like, dude, your idea is shit. Like, how about you just do 10 for 10? And he just ghosted me. Like, he didn't respond, uh, which is kind of funny. Um but I, I was shitting on it. I'm like, this idea is never going to work. And then fast forward to today, I'm listening to their podcast. And he's like, yeah, we put this out. And, you know, we've had 30 million views on all our videos that people have been making. 30 million. Meanwhile, we were stoked to get like, uh, 10, 000, I don't know, 20, 000, half a million 000, views on. with For like, sure. like $100,000 spent. Like they spent a, a fuckload of money versus here they spent a fraction of that and gotten significantly oh, more. And dude, I've been seeing that um, our future, those guys on YouTube Shorts. Oh yeah, they get hundreds of thousands. What the fuck's playing? Oh, my YouTube. They'll get hundreds of thousands of likes on a video. That's uh, millions of views, and they're they're like. So if my first million for us was this like smart nonsense 1.0 Mimi stuff, they're like slightly below that. In terms right. of quality, they don't have like the goofy cartoons moving around, but it's just like pictures. <laughs> right. So we, we asked ourselves and same thing with all in talk. We were getting kind of uh, angry because we're like, oh, we put in all this effort and then all in talk just smokes us with the shittiest videos. And we were kind of rationalizing like, oh, everyone needs this high quality because that was our only edge. Our edge was like, right. oh, we found the best animators. 
So what do we have to do? Animate the shit out of everything. But that's not what people want or need. They just want like good enough and then massively produce it. Like uh, Sam was saying, there was one of these little Yantan creators making their clips and he put out like a hundred clips of just the Rob Deerdeck episode, just like different variations. And that's the thing. It's just TikTok and Instagram reels because they're always experimenting on the algorithm. It's just straight quantity, just fucking throw quantity. And one of them is going to hit. And that's just, that's just the method. So, uh, it was infuriating for us and we kind of like self-reflected of where does smart nonsense, the media agency die? We die by all these people seeing the insane success of amateur creators just blowing agencies and smart nonsense out of the water. And we, we had no rationalization. Some would still work with us like we thought synthesis, for example, we're doing these incredible clips that no one could touch. But now even they're starting to question stuff. Yeah, like this is fairly they're recent. But ads. They're right. questioning things. We're like, because it only makes sense other, as ads. We we had this other interesting finding, which is like when we blitz people with crazy clips, my crazy face, we put together this package, this pitch, this clip the uh, clip pitch, not clipped. We do that. We go to them. We're like, we're going to do your content. We're going to do it all. It's going to be this beautiful. You didn't even have to lift a finger. Then we ask them to pay a lot of money. And then you and I and most of the agency go on to the next thing because we don't actually like micromanage as an agency and help you. So we realize, like in these blitzes we're doing, we're actually pitching a lie. We're saying we are going to be your white glove service cranking through your short form content and we're going to do it all for you you just have to click retweet but that wasn't right. actually Every, really true it's all expectations because they come in and they're like oh 10 grand for 10 clips is expensive but i'm getting an agency i'm getting it, it is literally media like smart nonsense media that's clearly a media agency so they expect just white glove stuff i remember one of our clients actually are literally our best client now it's kind of funny because we wanted to fire him at multiple times but uh <laughs> untold uh I love that dude. They're, dude, it's really funny. He's such a chiller. And uh, uh, there was a podcast we shot on how I was so wrong about that whole relationship. But they've been awesome. But um, he was like, oh, yeah, I have an agency, but it's a lot more like white glove than yours. Like, I get what you're trying to do in with productizing and like removing yourself. But that's just like agencies almost never run that way. Like, that's just people don't expect that from an agency. And so what we were doing with these blitzes was we come in. Same thing with my first million. Like our issue was we made the content for them, but they couldn't even retweet it. Like it was just too much work for them. Uh, we we're making so much of it and it was just like constantly bugging them to like upload and do do this extra work. But keep in mind, they've they've had this HubSpot transition. They've just been constantly understaffed. So it's adding work to their plate. Same thing with say synthesis, like we blitz them and they're like, okay, we didn't plan on doing clips in these videos. Now we're going to do them. But if Henry and Dylan are no longer around after the first week and we have to figure out who's going to upload it on our team, who's going to add the captions, who's going to add the tags, who's going to actually make sure that everyone's retweeting. It's now like 10, 15 hours of extra work to someone's plate on the team. And they're not going to scale and hire another person just because they hired us. That's going to be costing them more money in their startups. So we realized all these blitzes, unless it's like all in or Naval, where we're literally doing all the work and all they have to do is hit retweet like once or twice a week. Unless it's like that, it's just going to fall through because we're not actually, the agency was, that actually has their logins. I was just talking to the marketing team with Buzzsprout because they want to do stuff. And I'm like, yeah, we, we can do it. We're, we're clipped now. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I, I want the 10 clips and I want to just throw money at the problem. He literally said that. He's like, we've got some in-house people, but we're so understaffed. He's like, I just want to throw money at, at you all and it gets taken care of. I'm like, right. we can figure out something that, that works with the animators you hire, but like, we just don't do that. Anymore. We never did that, frankly, which is we didn't realize until this last week. Yeah. So luckily before that, uh, last month, we kind of, we've had all these pressures mounting of like, okay, our videos aren't getting the views. We we're kind of rationalizing it with, well, a view on TikTok isn't the same as like a, a highly animated premium quality clip view on Twitter. But at the end of the Which day, is like true, that is true. I, I heard um, 
one YouTube subscriber is the equivalent of like a hundred Twitter followers. Right. Right. Like right. there are, so, and Maddie Hapoya even told me like people like scroll through short form content, right? Reels, TikTok, shorts. You don't know a single creator you're watching. You're just like consuming right. that stuff. There's no authenticity. So it it is well, different. Our edge was no one was doing content like ours. So when you saw it, you immediately like, oh, that's smart nonsense. You just knew because no one else on the internet is doing that level of animation. So it, it connected well to us, connected back to us. It also had like a premium brand feel for those that wanted it. But a lot of people don't need that. Most people don't. So we just, uh, it's kind of one of those things where it's easy to rationalize the opposite case of we got a million views on this. Let's keep doing that. Versus we got a thousand views on this, but the content is premium. So it adds to the brand, but there's no tracking. Like we had that issue with my first million where they're like, okay, we're get, say we get a quarter million views on this clip, which is our best performing clip. Yeah, but how does that track back to downloads? How does that track back to HubSpot making more money? It's this impossible way to track it back versus like just seeing a million views uh, and then downloads going up because of it. It's just a very clear uh, correlation. So it's harder to measure the sort of premium feel that you have. Pop. So we've got a fuck ton of animators and we're moving toward clipped. And I think we both are realizing like uh, we can have these animators as this like boutique white glove ad making machine because that's what it's good for that's where you see an roi but clipped is probably going to be a whole lot more video editors it's like how do we pull the and on cord on the type of clips we're doing right you sent me this morning a couple that we're doing for clients that are like they just don't look like they should even ever they don't what are you talking like about i want to go through the chronology I'm about where Jake are you Schmidt. at i don't know i'm lost where you're at oh I'm we're going to about... too current Okay. I want to go. Okay. 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 So we basically had this realization. I'm going kind of back hey, into November, I make a going into December. I'm going to need tea for what happened to me on this airplane last night. And that's a foreshadow. Uh, oh, do you want to talk about that now? I mean, we got a no, lot coming pop, with this chronology. Pop. I got an hour right. and 10 minutes before checkout. Pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let's rip it. All right. So uh, basically, we're realizing kind of this uh, Charlie Munger, who is. I think he's the in. chairman of Ber Berkshire Hathaway. He he has this. Hey, I just got to actually. Oh, pop supply and demand. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, me, Easy. you, CEO. C God, there. Uh, uh, I got I got this so seeking wisdom uh, from Darwin to Munger. Uh, Munger. That's the guy that I want to reference. Wait, also, this book was that? like a hundred dollars. It's fucking. It's like a normal book. I was like, oh my god. What is that? Um, What's supply it and about? demand. I don't know. I just started it, but it's kind of it's just like all about seeking wisdom. Um, I'll let you know if it's good because it was expensive before you okay, get yeah, it. But let me know. I imagine it's worth it. But uh, his big quotes or one of his big quotes is uh, basically show me where I will die and I'll avoid it at all costs or something like that. I forget the exact quote, but it's like just figure out where, gonna, where you're going to die, which in our case, it's we're going to die by over animating clips that don't perform as well as amateur by design. And then once you figure that out, don't go there. As simple as that. It's this big anti goals thing. Like, Oh, what kind of company do you want to create? Um, that's hard to think. Just think of the company that you don't want to create and then avoid that at all costs. And you're going to end up making the company that you want to create. So that's same what we realized related. Like, uh, same thing with friends say, mm -hmm. like, it's kind of hard to think about what you want in a friend or a spouse or a relationship, but it's a lot easier to think about what you hate about some someone's personality. And then you know, right. avoid that at all costs. Right. Pet peeves are easy versus thinking of the dream ideal is a little bit more abstract and it's hard. So we saw that's where we're going to die. So how do we change that? And we had these, I think we had the podcast documenting my fucking like brain blast for a week straight of just me being up. Uh, trying to tweak this model. And I think somewhere we realized that instead of having you hire smart nonsense, the agency to oversee your marketing and your clips for 10 for 10, how about we just cut out the middleman essentially be like, we have the team, 
we couldn't really figure out how to use them best. That was tricky for us. That was our job was like figuring out how to use these amazing animators. We struggled 10 for 10 didn't work. It worked to sell, but not to deliver. Let's just set up the pool. And then whenever you need to come and hire super easily, one of these animators for an idea that you have, whatever it might be, whether it's uh, a long form video, a short form video, a fucking movie, whatever it is, you can come in and hire them. And you know they're going to be great because we vetted them. They've worked on Naval's content. They've worked on Will Smith's content. They've worked on Owen's content. They've worked on the best of the best. So that's the idea. You can come in. And it actually, I think, formally came from turning away that awesome client that I said earlier, Zach from The Untold, because we basically told him that we can't do his long-form YouTube videos. We sold him on doing short-form, which he's actually loving doing. But... He's like, I still want to do the long form and you guys refuse to do it. Could you just like help me find someone? Because I know you're super in the hiring process. Could you just give me someone? And we were lucky where we had someone on tap that didn't want to work on short form clips. And we're like, yo, do you want to work with this guy? And they're like, sure. And so he just hired them directly. But it made me realize and probably Henry too is, well, why don't we just change our business to that? Like we've had this come up multiple times. Right. We were also about, so we were going to offload him, a big, great client. We were going to offload Darmesh. We were going to offload OnChain Studios, a a crypto project. Three of our best clients. Right. Right. Three, our our actual three best clients. We had to turn away because uh, they wanted long form content. Even Todd back in the day. uh, Like Mm. he would have worked for this and they constantly come back to us asking like, hey, can you hook us up with some animators editors to help out with the channel so it's basically everyone wants this uh multiple other people like literally every week someone was asking for stuff but we're like hey we only do this one type of content so we turned away a million people and we're like okay that's the direction we want to go we we had this amazing realization we got super excited because we're like oh let's just be a platform for hiring editors and animators creatives make it super easy we did the a podcast problem on- was- hiring and everything hiring right we must have i i think we did that was probably the last thing we did because then we started doing all these changes and it's been chaos ever since or i know month so we basically realized okay (laughs) the beauty of this model is that we take our current team and nothing will effectively change for them they'll still work for the same exact clients we realized unfortunately that we wanted to get rid of this whole hierarchy this whole factory system that we set up just to specialize in clips where we had a graphic artist we had a time cutter we had managers we didn't want this whole system anymore because it wasn't needed you just hire them directly uh, our creatives and they work on anything specifically animators and editors so the hard thing was we had to get rid of that whole infrastructure and the people involved on the, the upper levels but <clears throat> the the good thing for us was like, hey, we can keep for anyone that still wants to do this like super specialized 60 second clips, we can just refer our graphic artists or our time cutters or whoever might want to work on their content to them and they can hire them directly so they can still do that content. You can still have the same process. Like say, for example, you're one of the editors. Um, typically for 10 for 10, we'd had two animators Um, an editor and a graphic artist all working on that. So if you're one of the animators, you'd still work with that client. You'd still have access to the same time cutter and the same uh, graphic artist, essentially. And uh, nothing would change on your end. We would just be paying more because this model allows us to pay everyone more because they're working more directly with the client. So we thought that, sure, it would be hard for a part of the team, which we're effectively having to fire, but we're also giving them job placement immediately. And for those that we couldn't find new jobs for, we would give them awesome like two months severance, which is unheard of for most Filipino contractor work. So we thought it's for them, maybe a little bit hard, but for the rest of the team, the majority of the team, it is effectively not much changes. You just get this awesome up to 50%, often like on average 50% uh, pay increase. The caveat was, for us to make this model scalable, which we wanted to take smart nonsense and go from, say, 30 to 40 creatives and bring it to 
a thousand, two thousand creatives on this large platform, we had to make some changes. Like it couldn't be this sort of tight knit agency model anymore. We wanted to take as much of that culture as we could, but it would have to be different. And we thought these little changes that we're tweaking of having a little bit of job insecurity in that, for example, if uh, a current client no longer wants to work with you, you're effectively not paid. Like you're only paid when you have a client. And then when we find you another, which would likely be immediately because that's our goal is to keep everyone employed because we don't get paid unless we do. Um, you're not paid when and, you don't have someone and you don't have. And where did all those vacation. problems come from? Is this, this idea and negotiation of anchoring, right? So it's like the 50 people we've hired thus far signed up for this beautiful, fun, specialized uh, agency right what we're becoming is the opposite of that where it feels more way more like independent contractor work so it's like we've got 50 people who are anchored to this thing that they love that might not have actually signed on to the video editing platform as a contractor in the first place so we've got a big mismatch there but at the same time, well, we need to keep all those people because our supply, right? Like if you think about Uber, supply and demand, drivers versus drivees, riders, <laughs> the supply is the hard, the hard side of the market. It's the hardest thing to get to convince people to come over and do their thing on your platform. So we couldn't afford to lose anybody. It's too important. So what basically happened was we sort of outlined this whole thing. And our, our basic Wait, philosophy right. was... I'm sorry. The, the interesting thing was the, the folks who signed on to Smart Nonsense, the agency, had a lot of trouble seeing this new path. But everyone, all the new hires we were talking to. Hey, easy, easy. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. I'm going granular, Belky. I'm going. I have You're the memos. You're so granular, up. Pop. I have. Oh, you got memos up. I got memos up. I want all our. This is like. I'm kind of sad because all the podcasts we've shot in the past were like almost relatively irrelevant. Like if there's ever a time to capture in company building, it has been the last month. And that's the time that we didn't right. capture most. It's literally, it was like the, every, everything's easy. Like for the last year, our life has been relatively great. It's like constant growth, constant improving. This was the first like real difficulty, real struggle we ever faced. And it was so difficult that we literally couldn't record it this is the problem with the vlog and when i make videos on our trips is the most interesting the when the hero runs into um like the villain essentially we're on a trip like fucking you're shitting your pants on kilimanjaro people are passing out like bleeding out of their eyeballs it's so hard that i'm like i can't even take out a camera right so then all the stories just end up looking like success highlights but it's really right. just because when shit is so hard, like the hard thing about doing hard things, it's like the last thing you're going to do is document it with uh, an attempted smile. And part of the problem is our team, like our team is going to be editing this video. And so we're kind of, I'm almost scared mm. to discuss some of our side of it because it's still so fresh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how granular you're going, Pop. Well... <clears throat> basically no but that's the thing right so we also can't record these kind of similar with the vlog one of my vlogs got out early about this change and that informs the inner company and the culture it's like this weird thing about building in public where sometimes you need like a two-day buffer before people find stuff out or you need to handle things right. in 24 hours we learned but when you're doing this stuff, right. it's like it's all on the table. So you just well, that was document. mistake number one. It, I don't even. I'm still confused if it was a mistake or not, uh, because so much had changed. But originally, our original thought process was this: we have this idea of like, okay, we're going from agency, but we're kind of going to a, a slightly less secure platform model. That's kind of what we're moving towards. But in that, we're going to pay people so much more money that it doesn't matter. Like it's just like. Hey, we're going to try and keep as much of the old culture as possible. There's a little bit more insecurity, but we're paying you so much money. If you just save a fraction of that money, you're going to end up being well off. Like essentially the math that we did was like, you could work a year at Smart Nonsense or 
you could work eight months at Clipped and take four months off and you'll be paid the exact same. The it's exact like, okay. same. Four months that, off a year. To us, people that are used to sleeping on the floor with no heat in a Chicago winter, all winter long, with barely any food security. We're like eating fucking, we're, we're depending on your parents to feed us. To us, I wonder, that's a no-brainer. I wonder if we talked about my food stamp application and why I couldn't do it because <laughs> it was kind of a funny paradox. Yeah, you could effectively, you could probably still be on food stamps with the amount I pay you. But uh, well, well, I was no, lying I. about I was lying about what I was making to get credit card limits raised, <laughs> but needed to give them the truth so I could get on food stamps. And I didn't want those two people to come. <laughs> you into can't contact. have those worlds collide. <laughs> That's too much dissonance. Well, basically, okay, that was our thought process, and we're like, okay, this is a win-win. I, I think I know we kind of we realized over time that people love security, especially in the Philippines. But we think this is so much more money. It's like, say you're making 100000 in the US, you essentially make 150000 like overnight with your job not changing. That's the way we interpret it. And we're like, it's not going to be more hours. You're not going to put in any more effort. It's slightly going to change what you do. But again, not how much of that you do. And actually, our hope was because Ken and I have kind of been modeling this marketplace as myself, the uh, filmer, whatever, and him, the video editor. <laughs> Our hope was actually smart nonsense. The agency is putting all the pressure on you to get things in and to hit deadlines so that we can get 10 clips a month that are 60 seconds. If you're working directly agent to agent, you know, like Naval says, with your client, they understand you're a human, not, a, not an agency that owes us a lot of stuff. You're a human being. Right. And so it's normal that you need to step out for an afternoon and get a vaccine or you're sick for three days. Or Ken told me it was his eight year anniversary with his girlfriend. Can he have Monday, Tuesday off? It's like, of course, but the agency can't have Monday and Tuesday off. So it, it's, it should should have been less uh, effort and work. The, the, almost the analogy there is, uh, remember when all the riots were happening with uh, when COVID was going on and uh, the, I forget the dude's name. Who Black was Lives killed. Matter, the, the spring, George yeah. Floyd, spring of Yeah, George 20, Floyd, basically. 20. Everyone was trashing these huge stores. Like they were breaking windows. They were vandalizing everything. And it's kind of equivalent with, or, or like say you and I, I would be okay going in. Not that I have, but I could go into like a Target and steal something and not feel that guilty. Because I'm like, hey, it's Target. They make a fuckload of money. Versus you go into the corner store and it's just like your one neighbor working there. Are you going to steal from him? Like, no, because you know you're taking directly from that person. The same analogy, like you working with Ken or these uh, clients now working directly with the animator. It's a person. It's not smart nonsense, the agency, and you just feed into the system and you get something back. It is you're working with Ken or you're working with Tony. And guess what? If you, if you step all over that relationship, it doesn't work for the long run. People aren't happy. Right. They burn out. You don't click. It's like it solves the principal agent problem where we've close we to it, pitted too close to it, as close to it as we can get. But we pitted two agents together uh, to understand each other. So here's the problem. Henry and I, we basically like closed ourselves off for a week or two and we were very uh, unresponsive in Slack. We're really just focused on cranking mm. out this new model. We, we've been, I'm even still like not as engaged as I used to be because we've been working through so much in this transition process that it's a classic we, working on the business instead of in the business. Right. It's like, we're not in the day to day right now because we're so 10 steps zoomed out. Sorry. So what happened was we cooked up all these ideas that we thought were brilliant. They're win-win for us and the editor, but also for the client. So it's a win-win-win. We're like, this is beautiful. And what's funny is we couldn't have been more wrong with how this is interpreted, both on the client side and the creative side. Because any sort of change, it's funny, we realize this, but any sort of change is immediately interpreted as you're winning, I'm losing. For some reason, it's it's kind of a trust thing. I know Naval has this. He's like, everything is long-term games. Like just play with the long-term because all your relationships compound. For example, Henry, if you went to open a bank account, I would trust you. Like I sent you literally all of my financial information 
Uh, so don't hack Henry's text because everything is in there. I got the social security. You got my whole life there. Passports, driver's license, my fucking dick size. It's all there. Sorry, Angel. But it's all there. I don't know why I have to do that. But the the point is I can do that because we trust each other. We've been friends for... Wait, why you have to apologize to Angel or why you have to say your dick size? Uh, making a crude joke. Both. Uh, it's just... I didn't. How about both? I didn't actually tell you that. I don't think I did. Maybe you asked for it. No. But uh, <laughs> no. Point Angel being, doesn't know. By the way, poor Angel. Okay. Carry on. Pop. Point. Point. I. Hey, big mistake on my part. Let's push on. So basically, <laughs> I can send you all that because we have this relationship and this trust, and we know we're trying to work with each other for years and be friends for years, and it's like there's no issue there. Uh, versus. Say we just met someone a month ago. I'm not going to send all that information to them because I don't trust them. So the uh, the idea is maybe they don't trust us enough. Uh, we thought we had enough trust with the team, at least, where they'd be like, oh, we've been working and Henry and Dylan have had our best interests in mind with like creating this awesome environment. Whether or not we actually care about the person, like I could say I don't care about Angel. Like I, I like people, but often I'm like, the beauty of capitalism is my interests are aligned with yours. So even if I don't like you, I still want to have this working relationship because I benefit and you benefit from me making sure you're treated well and want to keep working here. And the longer you work here, the more money I make. So it's like, we're all aligned in that sense. And we thought this and kind of not, was right, conveyed. if you don't like that, you get to turn around and go to the next person and play long-term games with the next person. That is like the beauty right. of it. So it's only, and that's kind of what we've been preaching for the longest time is, hey, we want to work with you for years. Like, that's the goal. And I think that got interpreted, uh, got kind of interpreted wrong because well, that's well, the goal is to work. You're saying that while simultaneously out of the blue laying off the first five people we've ever laid off. Right. We've, oh, so that's it's like, a great what's point. the truth here? We've, you're saying one thing, they're doing smart another. nonsense. We've never fired anyone. We've only hired and we've hired 40 plus people essentially. And out of nowhere, we're coming in with this proposal, which I'll, I'll kind of highlight in a second. And a big part of it was, hey, we're going to fire uh, maybe an eighth of the team, like six people on the team effectively. Um, and we've been trying to tell people for the longest time, like kind of see this early on. Hey, we know this feels like a family. But that's not the way we want to run this company. Because if we realize we're going to die by 10 for 10, we want to be able to pivot, transition into something that is long-term going to be more security for all of us. That's the goal. Um, so we had everyone on the team essentially read No Rules Rules. But it didn't really, it wasn't tangible. We were kind of only taking the best parts of it because everything was in the the, the great days of Rosie. growth and growth and growth. And it's like anyone can do that. It's kind of like a president uh, who's in peacetime is probably going to do a good job. But if you're the wartime president, people are going to hate you. Like shit is going to have to be like you get in the bunker and you're like, hey, these people are getting fired. This is changing. We're at war. Uh, so we finally like felt that feeling of we might not die tomorrow by 10 for 10, but a year from now, we might not exist. And this is like Henry's dad and I think my dad too, or our, my family. They're like, oh, highly animated short form. That's awesome now, but is that going to be around in three years? I'm like, uh, it, it should be, hopefully, or we'll just kind of pivot to change. Versus this new model of you just hire video editors and animators. Video is going to be it's, around for at least 10 years. Pop. I'll it's bet on that for... Lindy effect. So right. how long have highly animated... So Lindy effect. Things, for however long they've been around, they will be around that much longer. Highly animated clips, they've been around like the last six months. We kind of started that. We had no we were, competition. We were, it's sick. They're going to be around like six months more. And we're seeing that. Some of our right. clients are like, this isn't working. We're not getting the ROI. Bolt's like, we need to pause this because we don't want to use any of these. Let's talk about video though. Video has been around for, I don't know, since the 1920s, 100 years. We've got another right. 100 years of, of video. Okay. And then you and I, our, our bigger plan is like, this is a hiring play. How long has hiring been a thing? Well, 500 years. So Thousands. hiring's got another 500. That, that's not going nowhere. Thousands. 
So I love when you sound smart and then we say not going nowhere. That's not going nowhere, Pop. (laughs) (laughs) You're just speaking Spanish. They they love. I'm just stoked that we signed up for a completely different podcast. I thought I was going to brain blast, but uh, this is good because we're never going to come back and talk about this again, probably because it's actually wrapping up. uh, Yeah, hopefully not. I just want to. I want to make sure the hardest point in our our business careers is covered. LA so, is fucking uh, beautiful, dude. I see like the Hollywood Hills out there. Really? You're missing You're out. You're going to rub that 150 at night in. Yeah. How about I, that? I got, hey, how about this? One more thing, then I'm going to let you carry on with your granular timeline, Pop. <laughs> I think you should always ask for an upgrade. It's like the Tim Ferriss, go to Starbucks and ask for 10%. It's really good practice. So now on every flight, I'm like, give me the best you got. Give me the best you got here. I was like, what you got for upgrades? And she was like, well, we don't have any suites available, but I can put you on a higher floor. Great. Fucking 10% better. Thank you. It's just well, good that, practice. I think it's cool. It's hard. Uh, if you want to actually get a, a nice upgrade, MX Platinum. Uh, one, if you have that, it's dope because they auto upgrade you. But I took it a step further when I went to Puerto Rico. And I emailed ahead of time. I'm like, hey, I know I get an upgrade just want to let you know I'm getting in on this date. It's my girlfriend's birthday. I'd love it if you have like a, a nice option with a, a view. She loves the ocean. And then I get there and they give us literally the presidential suite for mm. 300 bucks a night. And I'm like at a five star hotel. Fucking insane. You, right. You got to understand those are vacant most nights. So it's like right. who's going to have the balls or a right. good it was reason like to Thanksgiving. So it was like right. the, the perfect time of people are normally home. Um, good practice back to the story okay we're coming in this is the funny part about this is like uh what is happiness happiness is reality minus expectations is that right hold on hold on pop i gotta think yeah pop because expectations can pull you really far negative right so our expectations was this is awesome for everyone everyone's gonna be stoked about this because not much is changing you're just making a lot more money Same with the clients. Not much is changing. Literally nothing is changing. We can still serve you. You're just going to be saving money and getting a lot more flexibility. More flexibility. We're not going to yell at you for making revisions. We're not going to control you and mandate that you only make 60 second clips. Beautiful. Wins everywhere in our mind. We're win, win, win expectations. The problem is when reality hits. Our first little reality test was coming in with the team. We had this idea of, okay, who is our dream team? Wait, so really, we... to, to be clear, expectations were really high. Our expectations were enormous. The highest. For this we, beautiful thing we created in our heads that was a win everywhere. Basically, That's what in, was happening was... Expectations infinity, Angel. <laughs> it was actually infinity if you listen to those podcasts. We couldn't have been more stoked. Uh, I w- couldn't sleep because I was so stoked. Uh, now, now come into the 14th, basically the 14th was when I was going to go to Brazil and, or like sometime around then I was going to Brazil. I was going to be gone for about a month. I'm like, let's just get this transition done before the 14th when I'm going to be gone for a month and bam, we know everyone's going to be on board. It's going to be the smoothest transition of our lives and we can just rip into the new year cranking with clipped for step in that process though. That was the 14th. We have. I think it was the 14th. I'm just saying a date so somewhere around there. But, it was. Uh, yeah, I remember we're shooting for that date to have everything just done so we can really hands off it for a month. Um, it's been the opposite of that. What happened was we had our dream team. And this is like going into Netflix, no rules, rules. You want the people you would fight for hardest to still be at your company. Like if they said they were leaving, you'd be like, no, how much fucking money do you want? What do you need? How do we keep you around? I want to fight for you. These were what we thought the 10 people that we'd fight hardest for. And we wanted them to be sort of our our evangelists. Like, hey, y'all, just want to let you know before we talk to the rest of the 20, 30 people on the team, these are the changes we're effectively going to make. Uh, we want to hear your feedback, but this is the direction we're going, and these are the reasons why. So we type up this memo. Also, a little grammar thing. If you ever have up usually don't need it at the end of things. Like we type up, you just need, we typed this memo or like, uh, sometimes I'll hear myself, uh, little things like that. We type this memo. Well, I'm trying to think. I looked up the word in the dictionary. 
okay, I don't like that your counter example is perfect, but it's more <laughs> like a, I don't know. I'll think of I'll think of Take it uh, to the limit. examples. Okay. So we type this memo, and it's uh, effectively like, "Dream Team, assemble. We want to fix hiring." We give them this pitch of uh, kind of the history of smart nonsense. And we're turning away a lot of people that wanted to work with us because of 10 for 10. Uh, we realized, let's just go to Quip where you can hire our animators directly to create any video. Uh, make it awesome for the masses. And uh, actually, we sent them two memos. The first was like, this is sort of the vision for the company. And the second was, hey, uh, because you're the dream team, you need the vision. But everyone else might not need the vision. They just need like, how is your life going to change? So we sent them the vision. And like it was objectively dope for them um, because they're they're just getting like smart nonsense, but with even better benefits. But the issue came with the team memo that we proposed. And this is where we fucked up big time. Uh, <laughs> I don't even I can't imagine how we could have fucked up more. But we thought we we're dope. We we're going to drop this until they, everything was going to be cool. What happens was. Basically, we say. Smart nonsense media sucks for clients. We're changing to Clipped so they can hire you directly. Here are the two big changes. One, you are officially a freelancer. <laughs> and then I have a little sub bullets. You're only paid when you have a customer. Bolded, no severance or benefits. <laughs> You're Holy smokes, responsible I forgot about for this. all aspects of the edit. Let me screen share just because... Uh, so you can this see it as we go along. Is, um, every bullet so far has been a loss. Yeah. Well, and freelancer is kind of... the wrong word. We realize freelancer is not what this is. <laughs> right. A, a freelancer it has to go on a platform, market themselves, manage their own schedule, find clients themselves. That's Jump job to is. job. Jump job uh, to job. This is contract work. So, yeah, basically bolding it. The reason why was like, oh, we're on the same team as them. Like we kind of I wanted to get like the most polarizing shit out of the way and be like, yo, what do y'all think? Like just radical honesty sort of thing. Uh, the problem is people like sugarcoating and our radical honesty was kind of misworded. And we realized the importance of words like freelancer. That is a trigger word. If there was ever a trigger <laughs> word, this is one. We didn't realize that. No severance or benefits, trigger because, words. Well, Pop, our, our entire team used to be freelancers and came to Smart right. Nonsense Media, the agency, because we were all about our strict rules and not burning out and putting the creative first. And we're like, you're a freelancer again. Right. So Triggered. Uh, basically, we said like all the shittiest parts in bullet number one. The second bullet was like, hey, you're paid a lot more. You're paid weekly. You don't need invoices. Uh, it's just dope. Um, and then <clears throat> a little bit later on, or I guess I'll screen share again for a second. Uh, a little bit later on, we're basically like, hey, by the way, um, unfortunately, we aren't ready to open clip to graphic artists. So we're asking to hire directly, but we can't guarantee they'll have a job. So basically, we're probably going to fire some graphic artists um and i think i just took some of their feedback i forget what that other stuff is but uh we dropped this message in our dream team again this is like the team that we thought would be on our side fight for us we want to fight for you let's make this amazing these are like the hardest details about this change we want to get them out in the open and it was scary it's basically what happened was this i sent the message and we didn't hear anything. We just see these little eyeballs like on the red, but no like, oh, this is awesome. We're stoked about it. Thanks for the pay increase. Let's do it. I know the changes are tough, but like, let's figure it out. None of that. Crickets. Absolute crickets, which camel crickets. is the scariest thing. What? Camel crickets. You ever seen a camel cricket? Oh, the big crickets. A I'm, I'm just going to need Angel to put one up right here. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. That's not what I thought it was. Uh, onward. onward. Okay. Onward. Uh, big crickets. So big. we get these. And now it's kind of stewing. I'm like, yo, Belky, what's going on here? We effectively just told the dream team, like, 
our thought process was Dream Team is going to read their message first and be like, you get the best benefits. Your pay is going up a fuckload. You're getting uh, severance out the wazoo if that's ever the case. Better uh, benefits than ever before. They get the Dream Team package and then the rest of the team is just paid more and has a little bit more insecurity, but they're still working on the same stuff they were before. But we get nothing. And let me look back. I'm looking at the responses. A couple rockets, some surprises. And I'm like, thoughts thread. And they start adding, oh, dude, this is going to give me PTSD. Uh, yeah, it was dark. They start adding their thoughts, and it's just shitting all over us. Like, freelancer, what the fuck is this? Oh, they're not swearing. They're like, freelancer, what is this? Like, we didn't sign on for this. Like, this is going to destroy our culture. Like, a lot of just the most concern. Um, I'll basically <laughs> fast forward, but we're like, okay, we messed this up. We had a little... Uh, thread going back and forth in Slack, but we're like getting ripped apart. Like this is, this is like we're telling them we're gonna murder their children. It was that sort of powerful response, and it was out of blue, out of the blue for us because we expected a win-win here, and it's like everyone's gonna be stoked, and it was the exact opposite. So they're freaking out. We're like, ba basically, Henry's like, this isn't being productive. Let's just like uh, ask them to ask all our questions. We'll get back to them and maybe rewrite the memo to be what it should be. Um, or like is that when we had we, so we had when we weren't being productive we had this kind of dream team on a Q&A on a call it ended up being like well no, two it, three hours and we were just getting ripped to shreds absolutely well, no, ripped it was, to shreds it was, it was like Belky it was two stages first we sent this message and then sure. we're like okay let's do uh, a QA. and a like we, we kind of responded in the thread that wasn't working let's just like Send us all your questions. We'll respond to them and kind of rework our memos accordingly. Uh, they did that and it, it basically escalated in the chat and like we're going back and forth and it was really emotional and I'm like, okay. Um, so we rewrote everything, but it was already like we said the word freelancer. That shit's hard. That shit wasn't coming out. Like uh, we gave them what we thought was the truth, but it was really just Dude, a Philippine airplane just flew by. Oh, so Philippines all on the side. It's a sign. Uh, so basically we try and rewrite the memo and we're like, okay, we realize story brand wise, we're pitching this as the hero is the client or the customer and they're not getting the product they want. And that's going to hurt the company, but really the hero has to be the creative. How is the creative going to benefit from this? We rewrote the men, the, the memo to be like, okay, you're the hero. You're awesome. This is why your life's going to be better. Um, so we think hopefully it's better. And then we're like, okay, let's just get on a call to like answer any follow-up questions, have a more productive conversation than what was happening uh, in chat. <laughs> Pop, this Fuck, call. Um, I'm I in Brazil at this Glenn, point. Henry, I think you're in your van somewhere. I was in a WeWork. It was such, I knew it was an important call. So I paid up. I was like, I can't be in Starbucks today. I need, I need 80 down, 80 up for Wi-Fi. This is an important call. And Pop's mm -hmm. got Brazilian Wi-Fi, so I might have to take the helm. This was like Hollywood movie, like the quintessential CEO gets just skewered. I can't think of the word skewered. I was gonna say sivered, but I was like, that's an inside joke. So it's skewered <laughs> for a decision they're making. Oh, dude, this, this story gets this so crazy. This was the crazy. second moment in my life in entrepreneurship where I was like, oh, the things that happen in movies are real. The first was the first was co-founder infighting. And my last one, I'm like, Zuckerberg, the van, whatever. Uh, I like couldn't understand. I'm like, people just saw Which we haven't no. had at all ever. No, no. Uh, and I can't even remember. Uh, I blacked out. You black out in these moments. And this was like... This was like the why was Apple so mad that they, you know, Steve Jobs shows up for work and they tell him you're no longer CEO. This was like one of those. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, like the company Apple, the employees were mad that they were firing Steve Jobs. Uh, No, I'm just saying he went from CEO one day to, I guess, Barksdale. His VP was probably like, hey, okay. you're out. We all vo voted you out. And we read That's about crazy. this, right? You read about like Ben Horwitz, the hard thing about hard things. And Derek Sivers, he's like, I literally got my company. It was mutiny. They took over the company. Profit shared without me. And like I was cast out. 
And we're like, that's hilarious. And he literally, he literally had just, he, he went to like Europe or something and just fucking lived out his days there. And literally they took over the company. And it's real, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Right. So Ben Horowitz, he's in, in the opening intro. And cause you read it after this, the hard things about hard things. He's like, the hard thing about hard things is when your rock star dream team employees become so entitled because they're so awesome that you know they want to make changes that you don't agree with or whatever and i wouldn't say they're entitled here uh i don't want to like no, frame that no, the wrong no. way i think i think it was just such what we thought was a small change was it felt like their world was completely being turned upside down along with everyone else on the team um we even had uh one of our like current literally the the person that's been around with us the longest erica she was like oh I'm getting these awesome benefits, but now they're getting fucked, which we didn't think they were getting fucked because they're getting paid so much more. And that's part of the problem too, is a lot of the team didn't know relatively how much of a pay increase this was for the rest of the team, which is part of the problem. Like we could have said that the team was, we effectively bumped it to like $2,000 or so. We could have said that the team is now getting paid $10,000 a month. And I think we would have had a similar reaction. It was just... Hey, we came here because we got fucked by our clients in the past. It was terrible cultures. It sounds like you're bringing us back to that world of like freelancer or terrible boss or just terrible, no like chill work environment. We don't want that. Like that's not our goal, but it was interpreted that way because I was like, oh, in pickup, you should be like very polarizing. And I'm just going to tell you fucking you're a freelancer now, even though that wasn't the right word, but it was stuck in their minds is the right word. So... What happens is we get on this call and our idea is we're going to come in and kind of like give them the vision because what happens is one-sided conversation, which is just text, a lot gets misinterpreted. We've realized that over time. Like, let's just get on a call, walk them through it. Hopefully, they'll kind of get some of our thought process. This has been something we've been thinking about for like a month. So we know this is a surprise for them. This is pretty much out of the blue. So hopefully talking through will give us some time to digest it together. Um, We get on, we, we kind of go through the vision. But the faces are fucking mad. Like, mad. Just like, I don't know how to describe it, but I've never felt this way. Like, the team, because we've always been growing, everything's been fun. It's just been like, everyone's stoked. Um, There were some stages where the team, the calls got so big that we wouldn't have people, like, everyone's cameras on. And that was a little bit scary. But when they would turn them on, they'd all be happy. Here, it's everyone is upset. Literally, like, I, I think it was... Was it on this call? I think someone was, was it Erica, was Erica crying? Like it was like, I don't yeah, know if it was this call yeah. or a future one, but, but we shouldn't I've, name names. Basically well, it's not like a, it's not like, like a bad thing. I don't mean it as like a bad no. thing. It was just like, these are how strong the emotions were. And I won't name the names about like later on, sort of kind of the people who. But it was the first time ever where, where half the team in this call was like, what are we even doing here? What are we right. what are we even spending our time talking about right now? And it's like a gut it was, punch. We're like we we've figured all these things out for 3 weeks and then our dream team is like you guys are sick in the head. It was when we kind of put ourselves in their shoes, it it makes sense and we hadn't done it we hadn't empathized properly in the past where from their perspective, it is, okay, we're building this amazing culture. Everyone's winning all the time. And then they just get socked with insecurity. You're a freelancer. You're going back. Uh, like, fuck, there were some other things of like, oh, what do I want to say? Oh, where we're constantly like, I don't think it was very clear. Oh, Maybe yeah. when they work for Submarine. companies in the past. But yeah. And when they work for companies in the past, it's like, hey, We've been a company for 10 years, an agency, like just barely making it by, but we've been making it by. This is the system we use, and it's roughly going to be the same for the next 10 years. We're not like that. We are a startup. We were made six to eight months ago. Like we didn't exist before that. We're creating this completely new niche, and we're trying to figure out all these different pricing, these models, these like what makes the most sense, and we have no idea. Like we we often say to the team, Hey, we, we often like, we think we're smart because we read these books, but we're really just taking shots in the dark and trying to like improve as we go. But this sort of honesty, like humility, what we thought was really conveying to them, Hey, our leaders 
are pulling us in all these different directions as if we're fucking objects, like not real people, and completely upending our lives with just assumptions. Like they don't know what the fuck's going to happen. This is just their hypothesis. Oh, we think people are going to like this, so we should do this. And now I'm the one that has to create a completely different company within. Like I have to create, uh, we're asking them to create like 10 for 10 teams. And then literally the next week we're like, hey, remember 10 for 10? Fuck that. We're, we're going to do clipped. And so they're like, these guys don't know what the fuck they're doing. We should hire marketers. Like let's hire people that know how to run an agency because Dylan and Henry have no idea. Like we don't know actually what you do. Like what is your value add? Because you're, you're clearly not good at running a business. That was the vibe. And that was explicit. That was explicit. That wasn't the vibe. That was explicit. Right. They're like, right. if you want to make these changes and test these assumptions, we need to bring in execs. We need to bring in marketers. We need to bring in recruiters and HR. And we're like, oh, that's all we do. It it was one of those disconnects where like, oh, we're total we're not even talking and, like and by the on way, the same they were like at all. They were they were like, Why do you expect these things from us? We don't know anything you're talking about. We're, right. We just want to edit video. We're creatives. We don't know how to run a business. That's why we're creatives. And the and funny like, thing was, when we had 10 for 10, Henry and I were like, oh, let's just keep Smart Nonsense the agency and build uh, Smart Nonsense Tech or Clipped and keep these things as separate. And we'll just have these two people from Smart Nonsense, our most trusted people or who we think would do best running that company. But then we get to this call and we're used to like Henry and I when we work together, it's super productive. No, but we're wait, like, you, hey. you, you asked them to run that company and they didn't want the role and they right. pitched something else they'd like to do. And we couldn't fathom right. why they wouldn't want to run the company. And couldn't the fathom. funny thing about this dream team, which we were, we were surprised. It was like to us, the crazy idea is, hey, we want to grow at like roughly 10% a month, which is like pretty aggressive. But anything above that, like any extra money we make on top of that the month, we're just going to give to y'all. Like you're the dream team. This is how you can go from like making say $10, $20 an hour to now making fucking infinite money. Like we're giving you that unlock. If you guys, if we figure out how to grow together through this dream team, this like strategy team and just fucking execute, you can be making more than literally our friends in America. That's sort of the pitch we're giving. And what was funny was no one ever responded to that. Like literally, we, we didn't even ever get to talking about that. Like this is the most beneficial thing we've ever offered you. You, can, you have infinite upside. You could make $100,000 this year if we crush it. Every single one of you. But uh, that, that wasn't ever discussed. So what what uh, what happened was we got into this meeting. We thought it'd be this productive strategy meeting of like, okay, you all see the problems that we see. Like we could die by this. Let's figure out how to solve it together. And they have their perspective of like from the creative side, we're from the business side. Let's figure out where is, where's the middle ground where we can still push forward and succeed as a company altogether. But instead what happened was here's the problem. We don't recognize that problem. Fuck you. You guys don't know what you're doing that's that was that was literally the vibe they didn't say fuck you but it was a very much like fuck you we don't want to work at the company you're proposing this is literally we just lied to the entire team telling them that we are effectively a family and you have job security for years and now you're telling them the complete opposite uh so we we have i think it was a two-hour call and almost we got to like half of the points we wanted to talk to we got to like two or three talking points um, literally nothing productive um and at the end we were like we just got completely skewered we were i was blown away it was like very aggressively talked to and uh and it was just eye-opening for henry and me of oh my god we wanted this team to to like run everything and there's a way to have a productive conversation. We know we're making crazy changes and like, it's scary, but like, let's figure out how to solve these together to you guys suck at what you do. And this isn't the way forward. We need to change everything. Um, so we, I was up all night. I was just rattled. 
Uh, Henry's like, dude, you just got to sleep it off in 10 years. This is just going to be like a a funny story. Um, Luckily, you can kind of get over things. I couldn't. I was up all night, like rattled in Brazil. Um, And so now. Now that made us question everything about that. Right. There's there's a there's two archetypes there. There's the person who there's the executive or the CEO who cares too too much about that kind of stuff where it's so overwhelming that nothing else gets accomplished. They do nothing else. Then there's a CEO that's too laissez-faire, like none of this matters in 10 years, that doesn't do uh, those hard things in 24 hours that need to be done. It's probably a good reason we're both here is you're like, no, this needs to get done immediately. And I'm like 10 years. And the average of that is luckily somewhere (laughs) in the middle. If you had one person, it's... Right. So this is where... We, we sought some advice and they're like, yo, you should just be doing these, these big changes in 24 hours. But if we made the changes in 24 hours, effectively just became dictators and said, hey, this is what's happening. Uh, because clearly y'all can't con- contribute and collaborate effectively. We're just going to declare this is how the company runs. If you want to be a part of it, this is how it is. Um, if we did that originally, I don't know what the company would look like. We kind of needed a couple of weeks of iteration and like getting feedback and figuring things out ourselves to realize like what is the epicenter of the company we're building. But um, basically, we'll just kind of like, I think we had this call somewhere around like the 18th or so of December. Um, and then we had a Christmas party uh, a few days later, right before, maybe it was like the 22nd or 23rd. Third, 22nd, um, yeah, 23rd. Yeah. And so we have this Christmas party and there's this weird tension of the dream team, 10%, say like a quarter of the, our company effectively knows we're going to make some massive changes soon. Um, they don't know what we're actually going to do, but we, they know it's going to be big and we're, we're pretty like set on this direction. It's just, how do we make this transition easiest? But we go dark. Like we, we don't really want to bring this up because we're effectively going to fire. We know, um, we're going back and forth on like, what do we do with graphic artists? They say they need it. But then we realize like, Hey, most of you don't actually use the graphic artists. And on the clients we do like kind of an example of the change that we're going to make, which was one of the biggest changes. Like we need graphic artists and the team fought so hard for graphic artists. But when we asked them, Hey, do you use a graphic artist? Most of them said no. And then the people that do, we're like, okay, well, that client, we told them they need a graphic artist and you're still going to have access to that graphic artist. So nothing is changing for that person. And then going forward, I think our clips are have too many graphics. So we won't need them. Right. Then we, then we looked even deeper and we're like, for the few people that are using graphic artists, this specialized thing, we don't like those clips. Those clips right. don't perform well. They have too many graphics. <laughs> they have too many graphics. <laughs> and everyone that we hired to the company, you weren't using graphic artists beforehand. Granted, maybe they didn't like that company. That's why they're leaving and coming to us. But it's we just like, anchoring. If if you didn't have a graphic artist in the flow as a video editor, you would never know what a world looks like with a graphic artist in your flow. Right. It's like how did you? So apply part of our problem. Here? was the name clips is like, oh, we're going to clip. They think they're just going to do clips and now they don't get the, the support that they built. They're like, if we're just going to do clips as because clipped is the company, why are you taking all these resources that we asked for? We asked for because we were burning out with all this. Like, this is the tone they had. We asked for that, you know? And like, we had all this shit and now you're taking them away? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, that was literally the tone of this call for two hours. Um, so... We we kind of worked through all this stuff and we realized, okay, we're not going to have graphic artists. We're probably not going to have the dream team because that was the most unproductive strategy call we've ever had. Um, but what do we do? We have this Christmas party. We have uh, about 10 days off as a company for break. And we're going to come back and uh, fire people. Like, do we want to fire them before, after? We're struggling. You, right, you email make- Shane Mack. You're like, yo, what do we do? He's like, this is some fucking tough timing. Normally, you want to do it in 24 hours. But I don't even know what to do if I were you guys, basically. He get, yeah. Uh, and right, so it's, do you want to make these big changes changes right before the holidays where people are spending a lot of money hanging out with their family, doing all these things? Or do you want to make it on the first day of the new year when people have had 10 days to talk about the changes and oh new year's resolutions happy 2022 we're not the same anymore 
And keep in mind, we are effectively going to be starting this new company, which we think is amazing and it's the future, with the worst first impression you could ever have of we are firing our team, the culture, we don't think it's changing that much, but to you, it's changing night and day. Uh, you're getting PTSD from what your old companies were. And uh, so we're just in this sticky situation of we don't know what to do. Um, we're effectively like, hey, let's just wait till after because it's just going to be too tough right before the holidays to do all these changes. And we don't want people stressed. Granted, it's uncertain. Now, like probably probably most of the team has heard about this um, at this point. I don't know like what's leaked, but... I imagine some people know like some some changes are going to happen. Uh so th- right that that's the importance of the 24 hour thing from from Shane Mack and I think he got it from Kleiner Perkins or something. It's like if you don't do these things with certainty in 24 hours letting people know where they stand and where the people staying how they stack up to this new vision if you don't do that in 24 hours people start to talk. And when people start to talk, things get spun in every which direction they want to be spun in. So you kind of like, to your credit, like you you kind of need to be polar and then handle that onslaught within 24 hours. Right. So that nothing gets amplified. I don't know. It's still still fucking tough. I don't know. Maybe at the end we can talk about what we would have done differently. But uh, we decide let's just go forward with Christmas party. It actually... Is probably the most fun call we've ever had as a company, funny enough, uh, because we didn't run it. Like all our calls, all our all hands, it was like me talking for most of it, which I hate doing. Uh, I would get so stressed out of my mind. Sometimes Henry would talk too, but it's effectively just us. I keep saying effectively. It's us talking and everyone pretty much on mute, which is sucks. Like you would never have this in person. Um, I guess they'd still be on mute just in person, but uh, at least their cameras are always on. So we have this amazing call and we go into the holidays and like we send a little bit of a bonus. We originally told them we weren't going to do a bit bonus because we wanted to transition and also a bonus would be a fuckload of money for uh, like 40 people oh, on the team. Oh, Pop, I'm thinking about the new year. We got to fast forward. I got 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes? I got 10, you 10 minutes. minutes. Oh, you of, check out at 4 p.m. Eastern? Room. It's 1245 here. Yeah, hey, what time is your checkout? I thought you said 4. 1 p.m. Oh, 1 p.m. Okay. No, uh, Pop, you God did the equation it. in your head. You did the equation had... in your head, Pop. Okay. All right. Fast forward. We get back. Uh, I, I had COVID actually at that Christmas party. I fucking got <laughs> rocked at Christmas. Uh, I got destroyed. I was just trying to figure out life. I'm trying to survive. Uh, we realized, okay, Dream Team is not going to happen because that was unproductive. No, you we had realized... something else. You had something else that what that was terrible, like what we got in Colombia. And then you had Omicron that wasn't so bad right after. Right. Oh, I got Omicron for the next stage, which is the hardest stage. But we realized we just want Epicenter. Epicenter, what do we do? We just make videos and we want a team to help or like two people, basically one to hire and one to screen. And that's all we really need at the Epicenter of the company. We don't need a 10 person dream team. We need two people, maybe three. Um, So coming into the new year, people come back and we're like, okay, we just got to push forward because we haven't invoiced people in a while. Like we need to move forward as a business, become equipped. Uh, we weren't invoicing because we're like, hey, we're going to transition over. Just got to fucking 24 hours do this. So we send a message to the whole team of uh, a, a reworded one, uh, hopefully a little bit better. Of, Here are the changes that are going to come. And then uh, I guess, what did we say? We're going to have a call with the full team. Uh, in all hands. One of the last all hands. Right. We're going to have an all right, hands to, to discuss. Uh, no, no, no. It was... Submit your questions. We'll answer them async because we all work async. Then we're going to do a live Q&A in two days at our normal all hands um, right. where we can kind of open up the floor and, and talk about these things more freely in person. Right. Virtually. So we we um, we get – I think we put it out there. We got some responses. Dude, this is, this is where it gets kind of tricky. So uh, we sent out that first message. I don't know if anyone like – we had a rocket. I don't think anyone really responded to our first message of like, this is what the company is going to look like. Um, no. So this is another 24 hour scenario. thing, right? This is a 24 hour thing is especially when you're virtual remote. We put this thing out, the typed up q and I'm wondering, I don't, I don't want to like, this is, I almost don't want to like try and crunch this into five or 10 minutes. 
this will uh should we shut down for a to be continued this gets crazy pop i this think we just when... shut down for a a part two i think I we think recap we have to. it's we have to. hey this is the cliffhanger it's basically okay the team uh, our dream team who we thought would be most supportive of us is telling us fuck you guys we don't respect your leadership we just had the most fun party. The team is at an emotional all-time high. Like, they're so stoked. It's the best feeling ever. They just got paid. The, the holidays are there. They just had a great time with their family. Coming into the new year, there's this little anxiety of what is clipped, but hopefully it's going to be okay. But most of the team doesn't know. The team that does know hates it. Uh, what are we going to do? Henry and I have decided effectively we are likely going to fire. I keep saying effectively. We're going to fire six people on the team, our graphic artists, we're going to change the structure of the company. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like. We kind of want the full team's feedback. And hopefully the, the way we approach it this time is better than the dream team and everyone's going to be more understanding. And that... boom, baby, subscribe. Subscribe That's... right now wherever you listen to your podcast and on YouTube because it heats up. <laughs> <laughs>